Hey guys, my name is Chris and this is my clock shop, um, Chris's Clock Repair. And um, I want to show you in this uh, video how I uh, repaired and restored my brother's girlfriend's father's antique cuckoo clock from the 1850s. It's a very rewarding and uh, challenging project. And here it is. I just want to show you guys really quick. So um, essentially what I'm doing here is um, it's my brooch handle, my pin vise holding my brooch, five sided brooch, which is what I use to hand cut the inner diameter of the pivot holes so that the exact size I need for the gears pivots to rotate between the plates. There's enough play, it's smooth, it's not too tight and it's not too loose. So as you can see here, I already drilled out the hole uh, so that it's round. Then I push in a bushing, okay, which is what that inner metal is. Then I have to cut the inner diameter of the bushing to be the correct size to match the diameter in this case, this diameter, which is about 3.81 millimeter diameter at the bottom of the shaft, that silver shaft I'm pointing to, that goes into this hole, okay? So that hole has to be larger than 3.81 millimeter inner diameter, um, but it can't be so large that there's slop. So it's gotta be the right balance, and that's where experience and um, the art of clock repair comes in. Got the time train installed, testing it out, runs nice and smooth, it's without any oil at all. Alright, so now I've got the strike train installed, just testing her out. Everything looks beautiful, running smoothly. So now I'm ready to install both the strike and the time train and um, various other components and make sure everything is working in sync, which is going to be the tricky part. Okay guys, so I removed this click from the wheel. This here is uh, what we call a click spring. This is the click actually, and this is the gear that it catches into. So over the many years of running, the click has deformed these teeth. And they're actually rubbing against the inside of this gear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file this down so that it's flat again and that will allow for a much smoother operation while pulling the chains. So that's before and then I'll show you after. Okay guys so there it is. After filing down those ridges it's 
nice and smooth. And uh, it's going to run nice and smooth against my gear now. I'm going to install it here. It's going to go right in here. Like so. Rest against my quick spring here. I'll put the tension on and I'll show you how it works. All right, so here it is. Newly installed. And now, see the click spring down here, or the click moves nice and smooth around that gear. Like before, these gear teeth, because of the grooves that were protruding out the side from the wear, was actually preventing this from turning properly. And eventually, it would stop the weight from going down, and you have a difficult time um, winding your clock. All right, so those are some of the details you have to make sure you pay attention to, especially on an antique clock like this one. All right, guys, so I got uh, both the uh, strike and the time train installed. Here's the time train. Now, the strike train will not move. It locks until I lift this. And then what happens is the bird moves forward. Whoop. The bird moves forward. So it goes around and locks. And the bird comes back. All right, guys, so here it is after much travail and adjusting this antique cuckoo clock. I finally got the uh, striking mechanism in the correct adjustment. That's a half hour, one strike. Here's the hour one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and the half an hour once, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Get in the half hour. Bam! There she is. She's a beauty. Now I just need to put it in the case. I need to make a new wire because there's one missing here. And uh, connect the bellows, make sure it's cuckooing perfectly, and um, clean up the case.
All right, guys, here's a moment of truth. So I made some adjustments uh, so that the cuckoo sounds better and falls correctly and so that the bird pulls back with the door and uh, we're going to test her out and see how she does. Oh! We got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. Let me take a look. All right, guys, so here's the problem. Just as I suspected, if you look up there, the wire that lifts the bird up and down wants to go too high. So I gotta adjust that. And uh, that should fix my problem and unjam the bird. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And try again. Alright guys, so here we go. We're gonna try again. I made the adjustment to the wire in the back. Bird should come out. Still doesn't like something. Alright guys, here's the new moment of truth. All right, it's working properly. Just wish I could get it to open that door a little more. I'll see if I can get that. Door. All right, guys, here we are. Finally made all the adjustments I need to make. And uh, I adjusted the wire so that um, the door opens fully. Boom. Okay, here she is in all her glory, got all dressed up and adorned with her leaves. Cleaned up her hands, put the dial on. That's 10 o'clock. Yeah, gotta fix that. 10.30. Well, I'll fix the door. Other than that, what a beauty. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, that was um, the antique cuckoo clock that I restored and repaired. I delivered it to my brother. He's extremely happy um, and uh, should run for a good 20, 30 years. So if you have a clock that needs repair or if you have um, need some assistance on how to repair a clock or tips and tricks, uh, just let me know. And like the video if you did. And if you didn't, uh, tell me you didn't and why. Thanks.